this is the particular approach that's used in BERT. You, you, whenever you have missing words, you replace it with square bracket mask, and, uh, and it will fill in the blanks for you, BERT would. Um, or in, in our case, we could just go out on the web or in our, in our database of statements and just look for those two words together, discovered radiation period, and, uh, and that would give us our answer. So uh, anybody have an answer to this question yourself? Yell it out, and if you get it right, you can add your, you can keep your hand up at the end of the course and uh, can get a, at the end of the lecture and have a, uh, a chance at the book. So uh, if you go out on, on DuckDuckGo, these are the kinds of results that it'll come up with if you, if you do this. Any, anybody yet have an idea? Person back. <laughs> Person what? Person back. <laughs> That's not the that's not the answer. It's the, the, the actual person that we're looking for. Very curious. Very curious. Good, you got it. So some of you got it. Um, raise your hands if you've gotten both questions right so far. Uh, two people. So I gotta I gotta ask one more question at least to weed you out. Uh, um, scalable search. Uh, so this is like I said. This is on the order of log n um, uh, complexity. Um, you can you have a discrete index. You have a, you're using a bag of words vector that has a bunch of zeros and ones and maybe twos in it. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's sparse because it's um, uh, and because you can you can just ignore all the zeros when you're doing this matching or this binary matching through all your, your documents. So it can happen very fast. Um, uh, synonyms and typos may get messed up by this sort of approach. So. They, they, if you use the wrong, instead of person, you said human, or if you, if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't use the words that are actually in the answer, you, you'd run into trouble. Like stimming will help a little bit, limitization will help a little bit, they'll take care of running and turn it into run. Um, these are, will help what's called the recall, in other words, the number of documents that are come back so you don't miss any documents. Um, spelling correctors will obviously help a little bit if you have typos. Um, but, um, but none of those really capture the essence of the meaning of the words, and none of them help with synonyms. That's where deep learning comes into play in these, these more advanced models. Um, byte pair encoding can help a lot. Um, it can do, uh, it can handle partial typos without having a spelling corrector explicitly. Um, pretty amazing approach that's used within, I think BERT uses it, and some of the, the big transformers. Um, uh, so the, the, way, the way this is typically done, the way you do this in a production environment, you would use something like Postgres or Elasticsearch to, to manage all this database so you don't have to do it yourself. Of course, we're just doing it here um, in, in within this chatbot in our own um, raw Python. Uh, trigram indexes, if you hear those, is another really handy tool. Um, that's something that's uh, appropriate for what we're working on, what we're working on with the genetics. So this would be, a DNA sequence, it's uh, typically four letters uh, for DNA, A, C, T, G, and G. These are uh, the base, <coughs> bases, and, and you're looking for a sequence of those, and so a trigram of those three letters in sequence can help you narrow down within this very, very massive document of, D, of DNA to the, the place where you're seeing the patterns you're looking for. This is the way that uh, Postgres does it. They use a trigram index. Uh, Pre-filtering. Um, so you can use these, these, these basic indexing approaches, like the index in the back of your textbook, to find the page, um, and then you can uh, rank the pages based on, uh, then you, once you have this ranked list, you can, use, you can rank it further using page rank or some other measure of the quality of the sentence or the quality of the document. Um, and then you, uh, but these all require, like I said, sparse TFIF matrices or sparse bag of word matrices. Uh, a uh, lot, of, lot of confusing terminology, I apologize. Um, let's get into some, some fun examples. Um, after you've done this, then you can do, after you've gotten a, a ranked list of maybe a thousand possible answers, then you can go into using uh, deep learning to look at each one of them with a semantic match. Um, so the key to take out of this is you can't do that full super smart AI that can read everything in an instant, but it can read very, very uh, a, a confined document, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, even a hundred thousand sentences very rapidly and understand them all uh, uh, with all of their semantic meaning, understanding synonyms and everything using deep learning. Uh, but you have so you have to narrow it down to that sort of scale. You can't search the entire web instantly, but you can search a, a, a very large document. Um, uh, 
so I'll, I'll skip this one. Um, this is one that you're going to use more on DNA where you look for edit distance. I don't know if anybody, anybody heard of edit distance before. Okay, this next question uh, for the, the two of you or the few of you that are still in, in the running. Uh, what's a, a, a name of a Python package you can use to uh, calculate the edit distance or find the closest edit distance objects into a string that you're looking for? NLTK. NLTK, I don't think has an edit distance. Maybe it does. Levenstein? Levenstein is the one of the package I was thinking of. There's one other. Are you looking for fuzzy matches of sentences? Fuzzy wuzzy. You got it. So if any if any of you has gotten all three of them right, let me know. Is, 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 have more than one person gotten multiple questions right? So raise your hand if you've gotten all three questions right. Oh shoot. <laughs> well, if anybody wants a, a free book, you can uh, send me a, a direct message on Slack. Um, uh, knowledge base QA. Um, so this is a, another approach to question answering. I don't think I have time to go into it. So I'll just get on to the, the really interesting stuff. So this transformer that, uh, that uh, Travis uh, demonstrated for me, he's got, um, what, it was Bert that you, you trained. Uh, you gave it a, so in this case, I, I realize the slide is very small. Uh, is he, he trained it with the sentence of, Gully Foil is my name, Terra is my nation, Deep Space is my dwelling place, Death is my destination. Um, and he uh, then asked it several questions about this reading comprehension test. And this is all a pre-trained bot. He didn't do anything besides just give it the document to read and then ask it these questions. Really amazing uh, magic going on here. Who are you? Of course, it answers uh, Gully fo Foil. Uh, where are you from? It says Terra. And, um, and, he, and th this is not it extracting that from the answer, not finding the document, not finding that statement. It's actually generating each character in the response. Um, and then, uh, where are you bound? Uh, it does say deep space. Before that, there was one that I got wrong. Uh, where, where are you now? It said blank. Um, so that is an impossible question, I think. Anyway, uh, it, did, it did really well in my estimation. Um, he's got another one that's even more impressive. Uh, this one, he, he gave it the entire um, Wizard of Oz uh, description or summary.